Okay, so everybody can see my presentation over says so skills you want to say united is one. Yes. Okay. So um, that is this year's theme. So every year skills USA has a different theme. Um, and they'll use that for, uh, you know, you kind of run it for your whole program for the year. Um, you know, like this year, hey, let's all come back together. We've been separated from COVID and you know, that type of thing. But it also will be a focus for like a prepared speech and, and some of those types of competitions where you want to kind of tailor your speech to show how things are uniting us as kind of one big team type of thing. So, um, so that's the theme for this year. Um, actually, it's one of the better ones, as I think, in the past few years. So uh, usually they're just these one word ones that I'm not a fan of. But uh, so... <clears throat> Um, before we get too far, so you have Terry Lufkin. Uh, she is on. She's our state executive director. So oh. she's basically the big boss. I'll use that email though. What? <laughs> I'll put uh, my email. Else. I'll put my email in the chat. Okay. Um, and actually, do they need to put their name and all that in the chat for um, any? Um, yes. If you would like clock hours, put your name, your school, and your email in the chat. Okay. And then um, we'll make sure, and I'll send you, well, I'll put the link for the agenda that has the PD enroller um, for you to click on to um, follow up. So you're responsible for logging into the PD enroller yourself. And then I will send the attendance sheet to OSPI, Shaylee, and she'll cross-reference them. And then you'll get your credit. So. Um, so yeah, so she oversees all the state operations and communications with nationals and basically tells me what I need to do and when I need to do it. So, um, but uh, so she's a great resource for a really good resource for you. Um, for any questions you have, um, I'm Adam Scroggins. Um, I work at the Pierce County Skills Center over here in Puyallup. I teach IT and cybersecurity, um, and I'm a, also a board rep and the region advisor for over here, but I'm also the state certified trainer, which is what I'm here to do today, is kind of help you guys get going. So anytime throughout the year <clears throat> um, that you have questions or you're stuck on something and you're like, hey, is there a piece of curriculum that could help me do this? Um, feel free to reach out to me and um, I can send some stuff to you or we can do a Zoom and um, you know, kind of brainstorm some ideas, that type of thing. Um, also, I'll have multiple trainings throughout the, the year that you guys can join in on. So, um, Our agenda for today, I'm gonna cover just like the basics of SkillsUSA, uh, cover some important dates for you for this year. Um, do uh, what are some of the components for the skills you say framework and how do those uh, match up to your programs and then uh, give you some resources, um, some links and stuff like that that you can get to and then start talking about um, integrating some of the competition pieces into your curriculum and how I go about doing that um, and how I recommend that you guys go about doing that. Um, so you're preparing your students. So is there anything that you would like to add to this agenda? that uh, we could kind of put on now and I can have in the back of my head while, while I'm going through my thing. Are there any, any big questions that you have that you would like to have answered? Or is it more just getting information? Well, bottom line, we're talking from baby steps here. Uh, there, we've never had skills, <clears throat> skills USA at this high school. So when okay. we're talking ground zero, working our way up, that's what that's where I'm at. I was in TSA for a while and so on, but uh, they didn't really offer up most of the stuff for my woodworking program that I'm doing this with. So that's my biggest thing is just, you know, taking this from ground zero all the way up to what we can down the road to build us into. Okay. Anything from you, Steve, or are you just grabbing information? You're muted. Still muted. There we go. There we go. It's like it didn't like my space bar that time. Um, 
I would say it's actually pretty similar for me. Um, even though it's my second year, I have never really had a successful first year <laughs> in the sense of other than just getting kids signed up. And that's had yeah. like one meeting and kids didn't know what to do and I wasn't sure what to do. And basically it's kind of like, we talked, but it just didn't go anywhere. And then of course COVID. And so that was the end of that. Even what do you teach? Um, I do business marketing, computer science, and um, entrepreneurship um, and uh, coding. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basics about Skills USA. So each year there's more than uh, 335,000 students uh, throughout the nation that uh, sign up to it. Um, and that goes from high school, a college and middle school. Uh, we're really starting to expand our middle school uh, portion of that. Um, and one of the key things that I try to promote or what it tries to promote is making that contact between schools, industry, and the students. Um, so the students kind of see a pathway to where they can get into industry. That's kind of one of, one of my, our focuses. Um, there's more than 600 businesses, industry, and labor organizations that support Skills USA, um, and just the national championship alone, or the national competition, is $36 million. Um, that's kind of donated uh, from those businesses. Um, the really good thing about the businesses is they're the ones that work with Skills USA to help deliver, uh, develop the curriculum, um, and a lot of like, especially the newer stuff. They're pulling information straight out of their HR departments and turning that into curriculum that students can uh, interact with. And I'll talk about some of that stuff in a little bit. Um, but it's you know, really industry focused to try and get the kids ready because these businesses believe that you know, there, there's a huge skill gap and there's a lot of skills that are missing from kids coming out of high school and they really need those kids to have those skills when they transfer over into industry so um so those 21st century skills are kind of a huge focus of this um some important dates uh so we've already done a couple of these um so today we're doing the uh, basics uh, training uh, on the 30th we're doing the chapter of excellence program. Um, so that is the chapter of excellence is where you go through and basically document all of the stuff that you do throughout the year. And when I say you, I mean your students and your leadership team at your school, um, they should be doing the most, the majority of this work. Um, and they're documenting like the meetings that you're having, the community service activities you're doing and all of that type of stuff. And then they can submit, you can submit that and um, get awards and all that. Um, my school hasn't done it yet. Um, we were planning on really getting into it last year and then COVID happened. Um, but uh, um, this year we're, we're focusing on that. So one of our other advisors is taking that on this year. So, um, but it's also, it's a good way um, to, even if you don't participate in it, um, if you were to get the materials for it, um and just kind of go through it it there's a lot in there that would help you plan your school year as well so we'll uh, we'll look at a little bit of that um today um then we're gonna have another advisor training on the fifth um and that's uh some specific tool um pieces of curriculum the absorb curriculum um as well as some other teaching tools certifications you can get all that type of stuff um and then on the 19th I'll be hosting a training on preparing for regional competitions. Um, so what I would advise for you guys to do is identify the contest that you're interested in becoming a part of and reach out to your regional advisor and get in contact with who is probably gonna host that competition. Um, and whenever we have for your regionals. Um, and so we all, you always have to compete in a regional and like for my class, what, or for my competitions, what I do is I reach out to the other instructors that want to compete. And then I'll ask them, what are you teaching? How are you teaching it? Um, where are you going to be by this date in the school year? And then we look at the tech standards that Skills USA gives us. And then we identify the things that we all have in common. And then we say, okay, this is what this competition is going to consist of this year. And then one of us decides to host it. And then we get our advisory members and all that to come in and judge it and 
Um, and then we run the competition. So you're really the regional, you can, you can really customize the regional competition to fit what you're doing in your local community. And that's the kind of the idea from it. Um, so we'll talk about a lot of that during that training, um, but just kind of give you a, an idea of what that training is going to be about. Um, that was which training again? That was the preparing for regional competition. So that's on the 19th. 19th. Okay. So, um, and I would even reach out to your regional advisor before then and just say, Hey, you know, I'm kind of interested in these competitions. Is there going to be any way that's going to run it? And, you know, like for my region, you know, I, every year I host three of them. So it's like, Oh yeah, that teacher's probably going to host all three. And then, then you can get in contact with them and you can even start talking now. Um, I, I remember in my region, we would just get like, usually there'd be like some sort of like a shared Excel sheet and people just kind of fill in information. What's who, who's doing what and where, but not necessarily a lot of conversation. So I was just, yeah. it's interesting to hear how other regions yeah, and re reach out to the, the, your region advisor. Um, so okay. your central says so is Brandon doing central this year? Yep. Yeah. So re uh, reach out to Brandon Hurst, um, and just say, Hey, I'm really interested in talking to somebody who's actually hosting this and he can, um, he can help you with that. Okay. And where would I get Brandon's contact info? Oh, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Thank yep. you. Yep. And then where were Ray, you were up in Stanwood, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be Terry Brava Mejia um, is going to be your um, region host or your region advisor up there. So she's at Arlington. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah. So if you reach out directly to them and ask questions, you'll get a lot more information than just looking at a spreadsheet or something like that. So. Um, so then we have. Um, Leadership training, so that's going to be at CISPIS. Um, that would be if you have chapter officers, you know, your president, vice president, if you wanted them to get um, specific training on how to be a better leader for your um, for your campus. Um, that's on the fifth and sixth of November, uh, and then last day for regional competitions is the twelfth of February, um, and then the registration for states on the the 11th of a March uh, or yeah, March. And then the state competition, if you have any kids who qualify for state, um, that would be March 31st through April 2nd in Tacoma. Um, so it's a short, so I don't know what your guys' district specifically, but if you do have kids that compete and you, you they are going to go to state, a lot of school districts require at least six weeks of advance notice to get that approved, that type of travel approved. Um, so you might not have enough time once you get like notified that these kids are going to go to state um, be before state. So what you should do is talk to your administrator and say, I'm sending this many kids to regionals. They all have the chance of making it to state. Can I get travel approved for them? And you could do that a couple, like a month ahead of time and then just get that approved. And then if you have like maybe one kid gets accepted to go to state, then you're just like, oh yeah, I said there were 10 kids going, but it's actually only going to be one. It's much easier for your district to subtract the kids going than it is to get them approved to go. So just uh, for new teachers, that's uh, just kind of keep that on your radar. Um, have those conversations that in January with your, with your administration. Uh, yeah, and then the national competition is June 20th through June 24th, and that will be in Atlanta, Georgia. So unless COVID shuts it down, but right now I think everybody's planning for everything to be in person right now. So, um, so that's what we want to kind of work towards. So, any questions on any of those dates? Anything like that? No? Okay. All right. So the framework. Um, so there's a leadership alignment. So you're tying that to instruction within class time. Um, they have performance assessments. That's how you're gonna verify that students have learned the competencies for each standard. And then you're teaching the 21st century, 21st century skills. Um, that includes checklists at the end of each standard or list. Um, 
when I say for that leadership part and, and from almost all the skills you say where it's instruction tied into the classroom, what OSPI is looking for is that all of your kids are getting, you know, the skills you say experience. Um, and then it's only the kids that like a lot of teachers use as a club activity for after school. Um, that should be for like your leadership team and practicing for state competitions, regional competitions, that type of thing. But um, all of your kids should get um, all the 21st century skills and, and some of these other skills that we'll, we'll talk about. Um, there, I didn't unpack my stuff, but there's, which bucket is this? I um, didn't unpack my curriculum for the last trip. Uh, there, there's materials you can use. Um, so uh, one of the things is this piece of curriculum. Uh, and so it's just a bunch of cards. Um, and it's called the Skills USA Framework Fundamentals. And it says teaching strategies for the essential elements um, on the back of each. So all three of these sections are in these cards and they're basically scenarios that are brought up that the students have to then go into all the skills you say framework and identify what part of the framework would be utilized to overcome this scenario. Um, and so um, it's, it's really good for, especially for newer teachers, it's a really good way to get a bunch of kids to understand what the whole goal of skills USA is uh, real quickly. So uh, it's pretty, pretty good one, um, but it's also, um, you can teach it without using it, but um, those cards are pretty good. Um, Terry keeps holding up, uh, there's a new piece of curriculum they have out there. It's called difficult conversations at work. Um, and so um, that is kind of an offshoot from two other pieces. One of them is, um, conflict management in the workplace. And the other one is my favorite one. What's it called? Um, critical thinking. What? Critical thinking. Critical thinking. Yeah. So the critical thinking and conflict management, the scenarios are pulled directly out of HR scenarios um, from various different industries. And so you have a workbook that you go through and, um, and, do like kind of a big class activity and then you break your kids off into teams and they have to solve different scenarios and then again identify you know con like what part of the school to say framework it is but also how would they go through and resolve the situation in the real world um so those those are the kind of some of the pieces of curriculum that you can utilize with skills usa um that would help help with some stuff um I think the, one of the things when um, we've referred to the Skills USA framework, so the um, Skills USA framework is all the um, different elements. They've got um, workplace skills, personal skills. Yeah, there you go. So each. That's my each, next slide. So sorry. So each of those um, sides of the triangle uh, are broken down. And then, so it, all the curriculum will specify what element they're um, dealing with in the, in the framework. And the framework are those 21st century skills. So it's just so perfect. Yeah, so hey, you guys, it's also not anything, like I'm holding up pieces of curriculum. Um, you can choose if you wanna use curriculum or not um, and use what pieces you want and adapt what pieces you want. Um, but the idea is on the blue side of the triangle, that's stuff you're teaching in class. That's all the tech skills. Like that's just a natural thing that's going to happen. Um, but we really want to focus on the red, which are the personal skills, so like integrity, work ethic, um, you know, really, really focus on that. And then the bottom part, um, the communication, decision-making, teamwork, those two sides of the triangle are what we're hearing from industry that um, the kids coming out of high school and even college don't have. And so we're really trying to focus on those pieces while we're doing the technical stuff. So um, for my class, what I do is we run the class like a business. And so like for today, it was the first time my first year students 
who worked on computers. Well, while they're doing that, my second year students are their supervisors, but then they're also setting up a network for the first years to work on. So their supervisory skills, as well as just the next level up in the technical skills. And so, you know, just being more cognizant of that type of stuff. Um, so the kids are getting more of a real world experience for what they're going to see once they hit industry um, is a, a really good, kind of a good way to kind of put a lens on this, which is stuff you're probably already doing in your classroom anyway. So, um, so again, talking about some of the resources, um, skillsusa.org, pop this up real quick, or won't. We'll do it the old fashioned way. Uh, so, skillsusa.org is um, this is the national website. Nationals offers this. There is so much information on this website, it's almost impossible to navigate. There, there's just so much stuff there. So, your search bar is your friend, um, it, it can get you to anything that you can really find on here. Um, but the Big things I would point out on this page are if you roll over competitions, well, actually membership resources. Um, this is going to um, give you a couple couple pieces of things that you can use. Um, there are resources for students um, where they can click on that, um, and that's going to give them like login information. Um, and just a bunch of stuff over here on the side um, that they can they can look at. So this is a resource for them to go and look at on their own or you guys can do this class, um, but also competitions. This gives you the list of, I'll suppose you say competitions. If I click on that, you'll see, hopefully, uh, where to go. General regulation, they changed it a little bit. Contest description, that's what I was looking for. Uh, if I click on contest description, this is where you can find out all of the different competitions that they have. Um, and there's what, like 140 of them now, something like that. There, there's a massive amount of competition. But if I go and click on one of these, like advertising design, just gives me a real brief description of what it is, but it'll give you an idea of what that competition might be for you might, what it might be about. So you can decide if that's even something you want to look at. Um, in October, they're going to release the technical standards. And so then you would just find your competition in the technical standards and it'll give you everything that could possibly be judged at the national competition. Um, and the really good thing about that is you can use that um, tech standard and align it directly with your framework. Um, and then so you can say, okay, this part of my framework, it goes to this part of this competition, it goes to this standard. And so OSPI would be really happy about that. Uh, and it also gives you something, I need to teach those specific things um, throughout the year. So it kind of gives you your roadmap. Um, so, and then some of them, like I'm looking for prepared speech. So if I click on prepared speech, it's going to go, this contest requires students to deliver a five to seven minute speech on a common theme established by school to say for the current school year. So that's the, um, what is it? Some, all of them. What's the theme this year, Terry? It was on the front and it slide. is one. Yeah, that. Um, so um, they're evaluated on their ability to present thoughts related to the central theme. Da, 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 da. Then it also says this theme for this year's contest can be found here. Now it takes you to the United as one. And then it gives you some prompts that these would be good prompts to use for practicing um, and having your kids do that. So I use these as bell ringers in my class. And so uh, like we'll do this actually starting next week, we're going to start introducing Skills USA. So what does United as one mean to you in relation to the Skills USA chapter? I'll have that as the bell ringer. Some of my students are going to be like, what the heck skills USA? My other kids who know what skills USA will be able to fill it in. The ones who don't know what it is, their job is to go and research it. And so um, it's a good kind of entry point. And then you can just kind of throw these at them throughout the year. And then it gives them, okay, who, who did good on their, their bell ringers? Oh, why don't we turn that into a prepared speech? So kind of working on it that way. 
That makes sense. Uh, there's all sorts of other stuff. There's events and everything in here. So uh, in, in Washington, um, for Skills USA Washington, you can do one technical contest only, and then um, up to three contests total. So the other two can be leadership or occupational, or you could do all three leadership, but just one technical. And that's for the state competition. Yes. Regionals, that's you just need to student. contact your regional coordinator, but more of them are getting towards three. Yeah. Um, getting towards three, and it's just a scheduling thing. So is that a, um, each student can do one technical? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. if I have students of different groups, they can go different directions. Yeah. Totally fine, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And like for our region, um, depending on the scheduling, um, like for my students, since I do all the IT competitions, I schedule it so that my students can compete in all of the IT competitions. So like we'll do one one weekend, another one on a front Wednesday, so on and so forth. But when it comes time for them to go to state, if let's say they got qualified in all of them, they have to pick one of those to be the one they go to state in. Um, so the know. same goes for nationals. Well, no. It's only one competition total for if you go to nationals. So even if you medaled, gold medaled in three contests, you have to choose one. Um, so then we have a, a skills you say Washington.org. So this is our state website. And so on the home screen, there's um, yeah, information <laughs> for, for you guys here. Some of it's out of date. Um, some of the, it's- The photos are all pre-COVID. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, but it has advisory information. So again, important dates and cost estimates. Um, so um, cost estimates are they're in here somewhere. Um, I didn't put this one together, so give me a second. Yeah, um, or just, you just have the- There we go. So yeah. down here um, towards the, the bottom half of it, um, so there's membership dues. So for the high school students, it's $16 a student. Um, $8 of that goes to nationals. $8 goes to state. Um, middle school, you guys aren't middle school, so we won't worry about that. And then your professional membership would be $28. Uh, it all just goes to the national office. We're just spelling out how, who gets what portion of it. Um, and then it uh, has to be paid before. Well, actually, this year's changed. What's the date for... Oh, this right. year, you just 20th, recently right? changed it. Um, you have to be signed up by December 20th. Yeah. So, um, and so the kids have to be paid before they can compete in a regional competition. Um, so I always call it, they have to pay to play. Uh, now you can have the students pay for it. Some school districts, they cover some of the costs. Um, you guys can do fundraising to pay for it. Um, for my students in the past, we'd always uh, have been able to pay through it out of fundraisers. Um, and so it's never cost my kids anything, but other classes at my school, they don't fundraise. So their kids have to pay 16 bucks. So, um, so that's going to be a conversation you have to have with your administration to see what they want to do and how they want to do it. Um, different regions have additional uh, fees that they've put on um, and that pays for the competitions. So uh, looks like Central has a $4 fees and then Eastern has no fees. So, um, and then yeah, North. And, and Southwest North. changed theirs to, I got to update it. They've changed theirs just to $5. Okay. And it says Puget Sound North and South, a $5 um, plus some contest fees. So we actually... You just pay if you're actually going to compete in a competition, you pay that competition's fee. Because um, some of them are for cheap. The other ones, like let's say it's construction, you might have to pay 20 bucks for materials. So um, just so that whoever's hosting, it's not eating those costs. Um, but sometimes they get all the stuff donated. So it's different from year to year. Um, fall leaderships, so again, that's CISPIS. Um, so that's 125. Uh, regional competitions, again, approximately um, 10 to 20 bucks. Um, state leadership and skills conference, uh, $100. I um, mean, you'll look at um, getting ready for that. So for each kid, 
um, plus a hotel, which approximation has been about 120. I think it might go up this year, right, Terry? Yeah, it'll be closer to 100 and probably be about uh, closer to 180 because we'll be at the Murano. Yeah, and only two kids per room rather than the four kids that we used to be able to do. Yeah. So, so there, there's fees there. So just trying to get you guys aware of that so that like, let's say a kid qualifies for state and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we can't pay for it. Um, so just kind of put it out there so you guys can start fundraising or whatever you want to do. Some of it's and fundraising it, and some of it's contacting your CTE director for even your school district, not always just your school. I know that down here in Southwest um, that you, two of our biggest school districts are um, the Evergreen School District and Vancouver School District, and they have two different um, philosophies for supporting. But you know that some of them will pay for travel, some of them will pay for registration fees. So I mean, I think you should go into the conversation like, what are you going to pay for? I mean, it's yeah. it's. I really do. I I think they shouldn't be having to pay a hundred percent themselves. That's yeah, and then the other thing is uh, run it by your advisory. And I've had advisory members say, hey, we're going to sponsor four kids. And they'll just write a, a basically a blank check and, and uh, you know, pay for it that way. So all sorts of different things. Um, national competition, again, um, you know, it looks like 700 for a student, 845 for an advisor. That's probably going to go up this year um, because of COVID and all that. Um, so again, I've had advisory members just write checks for kids and say, Hey, they made it to nationals. We're going to support them. And, and so that's a good, good utilization of your advisory if uh, that's what they want to do. So, but it's a good resource for you to just to have and kind of help you plan out some stuff for the year. Um, the contest descriptions, again, they're here, um, different partnerships that we have, um, new advisory information. Um, again, that's just really, really basic uh, new advisor information. Um, but the other thing you should be looking at is regional info. So different regions update their page, you know, more than others. Um, if you look at my regions, um, you know, we talk about who our region reps are, um, talk about the theme. Here's the different contests that we traditionally have. And then we already have, I'm already signed up for all of mine. Um, I'm committed to hosting those. Um, and as we add more, those will go in there. Um, talks about who's in the region, because we actually split from the north uh, a little while ago, two, three years ago. So just some basic information for our region that our people need to know. Um, then if you make it to state, there's information on state, nationals, and then just more about us type stuff. So um, some good resources in here uh, for you. Put in the chat also, um, uh, OSPI had us develop a different um, leadership template uh, for your program of work that is consistent with all the CTSOs. So all of the eight state recognized CTSOs in the state of Washington have used the one format that says leadership CTSO program of work template. So I just included the one for um, Skills USA there that ties um, activities to 21st century skills. And then also just the sheet that Adam's been referencing with the program of work dates. I put that in there as well for folks. Yeah. So, um... This next site, there's two ways to get there. Um, so to make it less confusing, um, so we're on the national website and you can hit join. Oh, and, and I hate that it says join because it should be log in. But uh, you can go in here and you can log in with your um, login information that you should have received with uh, your paid membership. And yours is going to look slightly different than mine because I do the scoring at, at state. So I have some extra stuff here. But uh, what you should have is two things. One is going to be um, a dashboard for conferences where um, you can pick on the different conferences that are happening. And this is going to let you register for them. So um, your regional competition will be listed or your, your regional competitions will be listed in here. 
Um, and so you pick on that and register your students later in the year, we can cover that a little bit more. Um, but then down here towards the bottom, you have the skills or say champions, tech standards, framework integration tool, jump into STEM and program a work toolkit. If you click on any of these, it's going to take you to this website. Um, so it's uh, careercentrals.org. And so eventually I think this is going to become the new kind of skills you say main page. But when you log into this, and if you're a paid member, you're going to see resources available to you. And so we have framework integration tool, which is um, when I was talking about um, that those framework cards, this is kind of that on steroids a little bit, where it'll go through and um, it's little like work packets for you to go through and um, like school to say framework foundations lesson plan. If I click on it, it's going to give me um, everything I need to run a lesson on that. So introduction to the framework, um, introduction to the, the handout, and then it's going to show you the handout. So I'll just... And so this is, you know, what is SkillsUSA's mission statement? And then what is my strength in, in the framework? And so this is for students to kind of, you know, start figuring some stuff out. So the lesson plan itself would have given you how to introduce this to the students, how to get them talking about that. Um, so it's, it's a multi, multi-page, multi-day um, kind of curriculum that you can go through um, to help the kids learn about the framework and learn what their strengths are, um, how to integrate stuff into, into your classroom. It's all in here. Um, and I could spend like an entire day just going over this. Um, but um, it, it's pretty, pr I mean, when it comes to packaged curriculum, this is really good packaged curriculum that you can just turn around and use in class um, rather than using those cards that, um, I was talking about before. So this is free with your membership um, uh, as an advisor. So that's part of that. Let me get back to the main page. Um, and I can dive deeper into any of these after we get through them, but uh, um, building self-motivation in student leaders. Um, so this is a curriculum that uh, um, you can go through to just help do that, help uh, how can I build self-motivation in my students? Um, again, they have, yeah, it's a, uh, there was a video in the other lesson and then you come in here and you kind of go through and uh, answer the questions there. Um, good one there. Um, then a whole nother one on pro um, promoting diversity and equity. Uh, and then you can get a, a certification in the skills or say framework. So, and then you, so students do that one. Um, and then there's a CT knowledge certification. So this would be for students to get a deeper dive into what is CTE? Um, Cause a lot of kids are like, oh, I'm in a shop class. So, you know, CTE is just me cutting boards. You know, there's a whole lot more to it than that. And so, um, this helps kids really dive deep into what, what it is they should be gaining out of a CTE class. Um, so it's all stuff that they could do. You know, you could instruct them and lead them on it, or they could do it themselves. So it's pretty cool. Um, there's a, if they can get, and they can get a certificate in it. And everybody's about students getting certificates now. So that's a good thing. Um, and then there's another one just on admin account instruction. So basically how to, administer all of this type of stuff uh, it's in here as well um, and then they have advanced courses for um, instructors on um, advanced experiences course um, this one is uh so like how to be do continuous improvement as an instructor all that you can earn a certification in this so um if you go through the whole thing and complete it you get a, um, you can turn that into your admin and they'll be like great so there's a whole bunch of stuff in here for you. Again, just to, you can do some deep dives into this stuff. Some um, of those, if they did seem like an extensive amount of time and you looked into it and you wanted me to apply for clock hours for it, um, please let me know and I will see if I could let that fly up the pole. Yeah, so, um, and then the fundamentals experience is 
Um, that one is more like teaching the kids uh, reliability, resourcefulness, resilience. And so there's entire lessons for each one of those things um, that you can go through cooperation, project management, um, responsiveness, all that type of stuff. So um, really cool stuff that's in here. Um, and again, you have your live learning events, you have your resources that you can use. And then um, it also has a comments page where you can chat with other instructors that are that are using it and just kind of, hey, I'm stuck with this. You know, what what can we do? And um, the community is pretty, pretty good about answering that type of stuff. So um, so again, just a ton of information and resources in here for you. Um, so questions on that or is that like a little overwhelming or? So. Um, not a lot of questions. It does look like some good information, but a lot to just kind of process right there yeah, for me. It's, it's definitely a lot to process. I'm just kind of throwing it out there for now. Um, we'll, later on in future trainings, you know, we can dive deep into these or let's say a month from now, you're like, hey, you know, let, let's go over that building self-motivation techniques. We could have a whole nother Zoom and, and go over that or, um, you know, my recommendation um, since you're kind of a first year teacher is I have like three buckets full of curriculum. I could throw all three buckets of that at you and you will end up using none of it because it's just overwhelming. It's too much. My recommendation is that each year you pick one or two pieces of curriculum and you're like, I want to try and integrate that this year. And I want to, and so you just keep constantly adapting and, and molding your, um, your class to make skills USA fit your class. Um, I was about to say, I think that little piece you said right there, that was kind of the key. I think I'm starting to pick up on that's taken me a while to figure out with skills USA is like, it's not like it's another class that's doing its own thing. It's how do I take this and integrate it into what I'm already doing? Mm -hmm. How to filter it in through little bits and pieces and how do we apply maybe some of these concepts to because I, when I have, you know, six or seven other classes that I'm teaching and they're all different content area, it's like, okay, how am I going to incorporate these concepts into each one of those? It's mm -hmm. just cherry picking and applying. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. I think also um, at least being knowledgeable about the framework and using that vocabulary with students is super important for them to be able to articulate, um, you know, like Adam said, you know, knowing, uh, you know, it helps them be able to sell themselves and learn what they're mastering. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think all that is, mm -hmm. will be time well spent, you know, uh, how to integrate that information yeah yeah and again it's it's focusing on like i like to turn my class into a business like and run it like a business um just because for me that makes it so that i can take take the business concepts and i can apply that whenever to any project that we're doing because okay i need you know i need managers i need you know supervisors i need this and uh, how are you guys going to work together and all that and just really so it's like the core framework of what I do for my class stays the same. And I just plug projects in uh, type of thing rather than, oh, we're going to do this piece of curriculum today and we're going to do this piece of curriculum. I just kind of pick the stuff that helps support my philosophy of I'm running my class like a business. And so mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the, the, the biggest takeaway I want you guys to take from this is skills USA is not anything you're not already doing in class. So like they have a whole in one of these, I can't remember which one it is now, um, probably in the framework one, um, a whole piece of curriculum on resume writing. And so I have a whole piece of curriculum I use at my school that's completely different. And I think our resume writing curriculum is better that we've developed. I still call my resume writing stuff Skills USA because Skills USA is teaching resume writing. I'm teaching resume writing. So it's also just kind of identifying what you're already doing and slapping the label on it. Yep. Uh, 
you know, and that's exactly where I'm at. I'm actually doing some resume stuff with kids right now. So that's yeah. where it's just like, it's even framing my own mindset around what am I doing and how does it line up with what skills USA is? So yeah, yeah. vocabulary, so, terminology and things like that. So you're already doing a skills USA project in your class. <laughs> so All the time every year. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, and so that's, that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of new teachers are like, Oh, here's a whole new thing I need to incorporate or integrate. And um, it's really just identifying what you're already doing that matches up with what it is. And if you're doing something better or fits your program better, just slap the label on it. If you're not doing it, you're like, Oh, I, now I have a resource I can utilize until I either decide I want to keep using it or I, I make something better. And so um, that's really what a lot of teachers get hung up on um, because they just hear, oh, here's a new thing I got to do. And then they kind of shut down. So um, especially as newer teachers. So for about eight years before I became a teacher, I was um, in industry uh, working in an engineering company and I was on the state board representing that. And so I was involved in the state competitions and and all that type of stuff um, from an industry standpoint. When I became a teacher, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna use the skills USA stuff. And it took a long time for me to go, wow, I was looking at this in almost a completely different light from an industry standpoint than from a teacher standpoint. So that first year I just picked, you know, one or two kids and say, you're gonna be on my skills USA group and we're gonna start figuring this out. And then just slowly, you know, the next year we had like six kids, the next year we had 12. Um, I average about 40 to 50% of my students will do skills USA each year. Um, where, and when I say that, they're the kids who have paid because they want to compete. The rest of my students still get the same experience um, other than they don't get to compete. They, they just get all the other stuff. So, um, but it was slowly building that program and slowly just kind of seeing, okay, I'm going to use this piece of curriculum this year and this piece next year. So, don't try and do it all at once. You'll fry yourself. So if that makes sense. Any other questions? I saw Garrett just joined on. So I'd ask him if he has any questions, but he's like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just got in, had a couple of meetings. No, that's fine. Uh, we've just been kind of covering some resources that you got that are available to you as a paid member. And then just kind of talking about the concept of should you use it all or just use what you can use when you're first starting out. So. And is, uh, will this be, uh, can I find this in my email or is this on the website? So this um, one to, are you your paid member? The, yes. Okay, so once you're a paid member, you should have gotten an email from SkillsUSA that would have given you a login and a PIN, and it would have taken you to this uh, mycareeressentials.org, uh, and then you would log in, and then it would give you access to all of this curriculum that's that's just there for you for free. Well, not for free for your paid membership, but, mm. um, but it's the stuff that's provided to you without any other stipulations, so... Um, there's also, I can scroll down a little bit further and it says professional member benefits, including technical standards. So it's another button you can click. Um, and oh, yeah. so once the technical standards are available um, in mid-October, um, you'd see another tab here or, or another section and it would have all of the technical standards. Now, let me see, I can find set real quick so it's a professional membership for maybe i'm not uh so terry would be able to tell you if you are or not you can wow. be in the system in the skills usa registration system as an advisor and not be um not be a member. member. Okay. And what's the what's the cost? Um, it is twenty eight dollars for professionals. I will put. That was one of the uh, one of the things that Adam went over. I'm going to go ahead and put the the cost sheet in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for going over stuff. Oh, 
you you gave me enough time. I'm trying to trying to find something. So my computer um, that had my skills USA stuff on it got corrupted earlier this year, and it all came back, but it didn't give me the names of the files. So um, I was just trying to find a, a tech standard for you real quick. But, oh, that uh, that's terrible. Yeah. So everything's there. I just have to do like these insane searches to get to it. Um, so anyways, it would show you the tech standards. And again, it looks similar to what your OSPI frameworks are. And it just lists, here's all of the skills um, that could be judged um, at the national level. Um, so they'll give those to you in mid-October. Um, and then I would just recommend going through and looking at all of those. I actually have it as a class project where um, I take those standards, I download them all. Um, that's where I go find it. Um, I download them all. And then I make my students go through and look at them all and decide which competitions they might be interested in. Um, and we just do that as kind of a skills USA activity as well. Um, see if I can find that. I'll also share a summary sheet that has all the different contests because I'm just like, you know, all about this printed stuff here. <laughs> Contest description. So there are 102 contests for Skills USA um, nationally. We have a few contests in Washington that are just state only. Um, so we have like a, what all do we have? We have an ASL test that's our contest that's state only. We have one called Creed that is about the Skills USA Creed. Have people recite that. Um, do we have computer maintenance a basic one anymore, my, uh, Adam, or is that yeah. now the national one? Uh, it's just uh, computer maintenance is state only, and then it's uh, information technology service is the national. Okay. Yep. Um, so um, up on the screen, what you'll see is this is the technical drafting um, tech standards that, that were given out a couple of years ago. And so to give you who's eligible to it, the clothing requirements, it'll give you the equipment that's supplied by the technical committee. And then the equipment that has to be supplied by uh, the contestant. So in this case, it'd be they have to bring their own computer, um, calculator, um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, then it goes into um, specific requirements. If you need um, uh, computer software and all that, uh, what that stuff is. And then you'll get down into the scope of the contest. Um, and then what it is. So in this one, that's a knowledge performance test. Um, the skill part, if you scroll down a little more, it goes into contestants are required to create a part, assembly drawings uh, of a mechanical product. The number of drawings will vary depending on the product. Da, 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 da. And so it just kind of gives you a step-by-step -step what is going to be required. Um, and then it goes into the standards and competencies. And now these are the parts that tie into your framework for your class. So, um, so just kind of that they're going to use sketches, bolds and booleen, uh, operations of union, da, 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 da. Um, demonstrate knowledge of drawing borders. And so all of those standards are something that could be judged at the national level. And so um, what we do at the regional level or at the state level, we figure you're about 75% through the school year. So only about 75% of these standards are probably going to be utilized. Um, and then at the regional level, we're like, you're only halfway through the school year. So only about half of those standards are probably gonna be utilized um, at the regional level. And so you guys at the regional level will decide which standards we want to kind of focus on. But again, it'll cover what are your math skills, science skills, language arts, um, all that type of thing, your science standards that are being utilized. And that all should tie back to your um, frameworks for your individual program. So. Uh, some uh, it's not all just how far into the school year it is, but also just the time element. You know, if we're having a competition that's four or five hours, it's very different than nationals who've got eight. You know, you've got eight hours or even more to do a contest. So yeah. time limit. That, that is in there. Yeah, and at a regional level, if you only have two hours, you only have two hours. So um, so it can all be adapted. 
um, to meet whatever whatever the local and state needs are. Any questions on those? Or does that help kind of see that with the tech standards, seeing kind of how that works? Um, there's also, uh, you can, um, I don't have the resources here with me, but um, you can get examples of like past competitions. Um, Google's your friend on that one. Just type in, uh, you know, whatever the competition is and say state competition. Um, there's a ton of them from Florida, California, and Texas that pop up. Minnesota has got a bunch as well. Um, and they have them just posted and you can go and look at those and, and pull them down. Um, you can also, there's access to past national competitions as well um, that you can look at. Um, so that'll help you out with that as well. So you can see what the contest is like a little bit more. Right. Any questions on resources? I know I threw a ton at you <laughs> really quick, but uh, um, realistically, everything's on the skillsusa.org. Um, MyCareerEssentials.org and the SkillsUSA Washington.org. If you just have those three links, um, that's going to get you to the majority of everything you might need. So, all right. So this was how to log in. I think I already showed you guys how to do that. Um, but uh, hit the join button. Yeah, we already covered all that. We kind of jumped the button, the, jumped it, didn't we? Um, so yeah, so. This says click here for registration information for connect, but if you click on any of them, it's going to take you to the same place now. So, um, so that helps. Once you are a paid member in your class, you know, for your class, um, you can actually get an authentication code um, for yourself, for your classroom. Um, and students can then use that to register themselves. And so they can uh, go in there and put in all their profile information, all that. Um, different school districts decide whether they want to do this or not. Um, my school has decided never to put this out because we don't trust kids fat fingering stuff. And also knowing their own home address is a huge thing these days. Um, so we actually register them manually ourselves. Um, but if you didn't want to take that on, um, this would be a way that kids could actually go and just register themselves. Um, and then they just become a member and then they get access to a lot of those resources that uh, I already showed you. Um, and then that also makes it they're eligible to compete in competitions. So, so if you want to put it on them, you can. Um, just uh, be warned. So we already talked about the framework integration tool. Um, yeah, we just like skipped over a whole bunch of this, didn't we? Um, so again, in that uh, My Career Essentials, there's a framework integration tool. So that's how uh, you can use that in the classroom, building self-motivated leaders, promoting diversity, um, the skills you say framework certification, CTE knowledge certification, and then the advanced experiences course and fundamentals experience are all there um, under your paid membership. So tons and tons of resources, again, I would just look at them all and then just kind of go, wow, that one seems like something I might want to try and integrate this year and pick one or pick pieces of different ones and try and integrate those. Okay. Uh, so the CTE model, um, I know if you've been to any OSPI trainings in the last couple of years, you've seen the drawing that has the three circles, you know, where the green one is your shop and lab. Um, your um, blue is the extended learning and the orange is your classroom instruction. So um, as your CTSO, um, the other part that uh, you really want to integrate in is the, your advisory committees and try and get your advisory committees to buy in to um, participating in Skills USA. So a lot of that is through the Career Essentials um, curriculum because that's teaching a lot of the stuff that industry leaders are saying is lacking from, from the high school and college kids. Um, so um, I also love to bring my advisory committees in um, to help them build my regional competitions. I have them come into class and actually watch um, our hands-on projects and then they give advice and, hey, here's the latest technique on doing this and that. Um, when, and you know, I'll sit back and go, wow, we didn't do that when I was in industry. And so I'm learning just as much as the kids are learning. So 
Um, getting your advisory committee involved if you have a, a strong one is uh, can really benefit you. Um, so, um, and that's kind of that career essential side of things. Um, skills state curriculum that ties directly into the classroom, your tech standards or the shop and lab stuff, and then all of the other additional resources go into that extended learning. So what's your guys' understanding of what extended learning is? CTSO. Okay, CTSO. Um, so IRC. what? Industry recognized credentials. Um, yeah, so the extended learning, that's for your students. So in the eyes of OSPI, um, whenever you hear extended learning, they're looking for opportunities for all of your students outside of the classroom, doing community outreach and community service. Um, now, what that means, they, they would love every one of your kids does that. You just have to offer it to all of your kids. And you might only have maybe one or two kids that say, hey, yeah, I'm going to help with, you know, that community service activity. But as long as you offered it to all of your kids, um, then you're meeting your requirements for extended learning. Um, so like one of the things, um, oh, what do we do? Uh, like a Black Friday thing for, for us, we do a research for the community on buying technology for Christmas and all that, finding the best deals and all that type of stuff. Um, that's offered up to every one of my students to participate in that. Now they all do, but um, if some of the kids decided they didn't want to do it, that's fine. I offered it to them. Um, so, but it's, it's some way for the students to interact with people in the community, uh, interact with your advisory members, um, interact with local businesses. Um, so just trying to set that up and, you know, maybe one or two kids actually do it you've met your, you've met your requirement as long as you offered it to all of your students. That makes sense. And that, and that's a piece that a lot of advisors don't do and OSPI will come down on them for it. So, um, but it's, it's, it's really trying to help the kids make those contacts for, for outside of once they graduate high school. So. Questions on that? Okay. Uh, so how to integrate all of that stuff. So this is my strategy on how to integrate most of it. So I've already told you guys, I really try to run my classroom like a business and then just utilize skills and resources to, uh, to help, help with that. The other thing I do is I look at all of the competitions that Skills USA offers in my program field and tear them apart. And so like the, um, the computer maintenance competition, it has like eight different modules in it that the students have to do. Um, and so one of them is building a computer, one of them is troubleshooting networking, you know, all sorts of different aspects of the IT field. That would be run at the national level. I pull those apart and those are eight different weeks worth of assessments I can do in my class now. And so I might do the, like today, we just did the computer building competition or uh, computer building. Tomorrow they're gonna get assessed on it. I use the exact same rubric that SkillsUSA uses. And then when they're done with it, I'm like, wow, you would have gotten this score at SkillsUSA. And now they've also been like, wow, I just saw what that competition is. Um, and then the next week we'll do the networking one and next. And so I utilize the resources that are there to build my assessments. And then when it comes time to competition, the kids already know what the competitions look like. because We've already done them throughout the year. It also means that every single one of my students has had the competition experience, um, or at least knows what the competitions are. Cause we've done them in class. Um, then my students who want to actually compete wow, now we just kind of go through those in um, more finite detail, um, but they already have the experience, they already know what's coming. Um, as a new teacher, if you're brand new to teaching, it's also a great way for you to build what is your semester finals um, and, and just utilize the skills USA ones. When I first started teaching, I started in April and they said, hey, you have to have a final for the class. I had no idea how to really put together a final. Um, and so I just stole the national competition for computer maintenance and that was our final. And we just did it in class um, and it worked out great. Uh, 
there's tons of supporting documents, grade sheets and all that. They're already built. Um, you, you can look those up once the tech standards come out. Um, and then, um, then what I did once I kind of got myself established, um, then it was like, well, you know, I'd really like for my students to um, do a job skills demo where they have to actually stand in front of um, a group of people and demonstrate a skill or teach them a skill that they've learned in my class because IT people, they need to learn how to speak. And so I integrated that. That's actually part of my semester or trimester one final is they have to do a job skills demo. Uh, we do job interview um, and we grade each other in class using the same standards. And then in our industry, there's a ton of people who actually build like help desk videos and post them on YouTube. So I looked at the audio video production contest, stripped out a bunch of the stuff that was like, I don't care if something's quite in frame or they're using the right aspect ratio, but just use that audio video production contest as a framework for my students building YouTube videos. And then the kids who win the, that, you know, whoever has the best ones and we decide who win, I'll post those on my classroom YouTube channel. And then they're out there and, and industry people can look at them and see them. And I'll let my advisor members know, I'm like, hey, you can go see what these kids are all about. Um, it's a great way for them to advertise themselves. So again, it was just taking contests that were already there and integrating them into, into my class um and then find other teachers at your school um, that are interested in doing um skills usa and turn it into your professional learning community um and then just utilize that for all of your tpep stuff so if you're doing a professional learning community to take skills usa break it down and make stuff that works inside your classroom there's no way they can't mark you as distinguished on on that portion of so domain for us is domain four um of your uh, tpep so it's just another way to help you there as well so um questions on that does that kind of make sense yes, no okay. um all right so what questions do you have so i know i've thrown a ton of information at you so this is the, kind of the time where um, I like to kind of hear what your specific like situations are and what, what we can do to help you make your job easier um, work with Skills USA and getting it into your classroom. So, or is it just you guys need time to absorb information? So Ray, you were doing TSA, and I know you're switching over to Skills USA. Um, what are the what are the things that were missing in TL, TSA that you think you need from Skills USA? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I let me tell you my technology skills. I hit a button, all I can see your faces. I lost the screen. I'm trying to find things. I'm trying uh. to log out and try to get back in. So. I'm not the most technical guy in the world when it comes out of these kind of deals. So um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll have the video available for you to, to go back and scan stuff if you need. Yeah, perfect. I'm just an old school guy trying to figure out the CTSOs and things that they, um, they uh, want us to do in these, in these things here. Um, they used to just have small woodworking uh, types of uh, projects and stuff like that, where we put together, you know, the, the, the drawing list of it and then uh, whatever things they'd ask about it and have it in there and then they have to present it and have you know get graded on by some of the judges that would be there it was kind of not too uh, high tech but uh, now that we're kind of getting out of the furniture and uh, and the cabinet stuff we're getting into more of the construction area and so I'm, I'm trying to think that uh, skills USA when talking to others about how they get you know come together with their regional competitions I think kind of set up better with that but uh, for me, I was just kind of wondering, is there a startup kit that you guys mail out to anybody that kind of gets things rolling? Or is this kind of, you know, through emails, whatever I'm needing, you guys will send something out and I can kind of start rolling. Because I can tell you right now, I'm probably going to have maybe four kids, maybe six at, ma at max that are want to jump in on this. And then we're going to build from there as the years progress and how I get more familiar with what goes on at these uh, regionals. Yep. 
Um, with, uh, I think Terry was going to say something, but when, with your membership, um, as soon as you've paid, you should have gotten a startup packet, um, sent to you. No, Terry. No, he might, he might not have done that yet. He's that brand spanking new. So okay. my thing is <clears throat> we were just getting signed up and then COVID hit. And then, yeah. uh, basically I got names written down, but I never got monies. I never put money in. <clears throat> so we never got registered technically and formally. So okay. Um, yes. that, that's what I plan on doing this year and then uh, filling out some competitions, see where we're going to end up with all this. I know we're already talking about there's going to, you know, we've had <clears throat> classrooms uh, quarantined and mm -hmm. uh, things locking down again and uh, going in that direction. So where are we going to end up again for what we're trying to do with this? Keep optimism, but you never yeah. know. But, right. uh, <clears throat> I want to get this thing farther than what I've done in the past here and kind of slowly start, you know, I know my CT director is going to be chomping on my ear here to have some significance other than just names on a, on a list. Yeah, I will um, make sure after I talked to you yesterday, uh, Ray, I didn't get you connected with the hotline that'll just have the, you know, the, all the steps to start your chapter, you know, in writing. But I mean, really the information you got here from Adam today is probably just as helpful as, as a lot of that, those written documents and, and the, um, the documents I'll put in the chat. Um, I don't know, since your technology skills, I'll, maybe I'll make sure and email those to you so you don't have to download them from the chat Then that might be easier for you. <laughs> I can download them. I just don't know where they go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what... <laughs> So once you do become a paid member, uh, just you, like the first thing I would recommend is you become a paid member, um, that $28, they're going to send you a packet and it's going to have a step-by-step, -step, here's what you should do to get your program going this year. And it's like basically the bare minimum of, you know, do this in this month, do this in this month. Um, so you're probably looking at sometime in October, you're going to want to, um, you know, just find out who might want to be a skills USA member um, and then start doing your like elections. Who's going to be your president, your vice president, that type of stuff. And then what I like to do is I give the kids the speech. Here's what skills USA is all about. And here's what we want to do. Here's kind of some of our targets. And then I have the students start building the program of work for the year. Like here's what we're going to do each month. So we need to do fundraising for this. We need to uh, register for regional competitions here. Um, and so just kind of have the kids start taking some ownership of it, especially if you have a smaller group. Um, and if you have a smaller group of kids who like maybe have freshmen and sophomores, um, kind of lean on them a little bit more um, to get their excitement. So if they'll come back next year and like bring that kind of knowledge with them. Um, and then um from there, like I can, like, if you're like, Hey, I need help with this, this, and this, I can help you with that. Um, your region rep, reach out to, um, reach out to them. So that was, who was it for you? It was Brandon Hurst for you, right? Uh, um, Terry and, Mejia. Oh, Terry Bravo Mejia. She is an amazing resource for you. Um, she actually, when it comes to the leadership side of things, I think she's probably better than like, I, I'll say she's better than me. Um, at that type of stuff and building that culture inside your classroom. She's a phenomenal resource for you. Um, and and her, so, her and um, Mary have both been um, state officer advisors as well. So they've had, they've, they've gone and supported their students through advanced leadership opportunities for multiple years. So um, great, great resource. But then, then the other thing I would do is, um, you know, if you have those kids and I would focus on some kind of a fundraising event. Um, so like you're in construction, um, you could even have it be like build birdhouses or, um, you know, whatever, you know, and you're, you're selling those, um, you know, but some kind of fundraising event, some kind of community service event, um, and then reach out to who your, um, reach out to Terry and say, hey, we have construction contests. Um, and so there's a couple different, there's a carpentry contest, there's a cabinet making contest, um, and then there's a teamworks 
uh, contest. And the TeamWorks one is basically they're by by the time they get to nationals, they're actually building like two two full walls and a roof structure. Um, you know, doing the plumbing, the electrical. You know, like it's it's a full blown like little mini house, like half of a mini house. And um, we've had on TeamWorks on TeamWorks we've had schools where. Um, one school will do the um, carpentry and another school will do the electrical and another one will do the masonry and um, nationals has been really good about allowing us to do that if you don't specialize in you know anyway Any so, you know. so so there's multiple competitions that would fit your your program so i would uh, reach out to terry and say hey who's done these competitions before um and there's actually an electrical contest a plumbing contest and a masonry contest there's like a ton of stuff for construction um and just say who's done these contests before and just start talking to those advisors and getting their advice um on how to kind of set those up because i'm obviously not a construction guy so um, one of the other um chapters that does wood woodworking also their fundraiser is um always selling these really cool um cutting boards that they make mm -hmm. That's not, I, uh, we just started uh, this year, we started up a geometry construction class. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the things that we're going to tie those two things together, we've got plenty of projects and we're going to sell them within our community. I don't think the fundraising yeah. money that we're going to, we're going to worry about that part. My thing is just making sure I can take care of the uh, administrative parts. You know, who do I got to get signed up with? You know, when I see, you know, I'm glad I got the uh, dates down for your leader. A lot of this stuff coincides kind of like, TSA as well too. Yeah, you know, we had leadership things. We bring the kids down. They learn the leadership skills. We also yep. have our you know, officer team that would get some special you know, yep. side training on their deal. I, I see all that part. And I've been through that. I just want to make sure who I need to contact, how I got to get the monies in, um, <laughs> and then know where the regional competitions will be because I've never done that part as far as we never host a regional TSA where kids will come and we'll do certain parts of the TSA stuff. So it'd be nice. <clears throat> um, Cedar Woolley did it and I got it through Mike uh, Stewart up there and uh, he, he would talk about taking his kids there. So that's kind of where my direction started getting involved in Skills USA. So I want to get into that and know where to go and who to contact and how I can get into some regionals. And it sounds like kids, you know, uh, they don't just automatically get to go to state. They have to earn their way into it from a regional. Yep. Okay. So that's new to me that I didn't know. So, um, and the other thing is, so like, let's say you contact Terry and you're like, um, Bob Mejia and you're like, Hey, are we having a construction contest this year? Who's going to host it? And if she's like, Hey, you know what? Nobody wants to host it this year. You can, you can host it and just say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to run it. And if nobody, no other school steps up to, to want to participate in it, you can run it in your class. And so like telecommunications cabling, I compete in that every year. Every year I beg every IT program in the state to compete in it because they should, um, and nobody does. So I host that contest during class time and I just have it going on while I'm teaching the rest of class. Um, so there's those opportunities. There's other contests that I do like cybersecurity that I do after school. Cause I need to focus on that one a little bit more while the kids are doing some things and I need to mess with them while they're doing some other stuff. Um, so I do that after school, but I still, I was the only school in our region that competed in it. So, you know, it was just me hosting it. Um, but then I have the other competitions like ITS that, you know, I have several other schools that'll compete in it sometimes. And so I still host it at my school. We do that on a Saturday. Um, and have everybody come in so um but so for competition side of thing your biggest thing you want to do is reach out to terry brock mejia and say i'm interested in these competitions i don't necessarily want to host them this year because i'm new i want to i want to be put in contact with who is hosting them um and then just get that conversation rolling uh is, is how you want to do that and then um then talk to the host and say okay what are you what do you think in the contest is going to look like um, and then that way you can start prepping your kids for that. Um, so that, that would probably be the, the first in your world. That would probably be one of the first things I'd want to do after I did my paid membership. All right. I don't want to take up time from everybody else. I just kind of, I, I think I gained a lot, lot more. And I think I'll be getting some uh, emails from Terry there. So let those guys, if they want to jump in and ask their stuff. Um, is there anything else you're going to um, 
uh, bring here as far as on the deal here? Or are you just going to communicate? Um, I'm just kind of trying to answer your guys' questions and seeing what your needs are so we can get you on the right path so that you can start a successful year. And, you know, we do have other trainings that I'm going to go deeper into some stuff, but and I think I've thrown a ton of information at you guys right now that you're probably already swimming. So don't want right. to throw too much more. I at gonna, you. I'm going to go ahead and log off here. I got something I got to run to. I got, I'm a football coach here too. So I got to run. All right. but, um, you definitely uh, at least ease some uh, worries on me there. And uh, it's nice seeing the faces and get to know you guys a little bit more down the road. Yep. Yep. Nice good, Ray. Ray. Nice you, Ray. you might want to kick me off. I don't know how to hit the right button to get out of here. So. <laughs> Like I said, my screen just went whatever. I just can't. I, I know how to get out of it. I just can't. Bottom, it. bottom right red. Wiggle your mouse. And then at the very bottom, there should be a button that says end. No, I got nothing. All I said, I've got a vertical of you guys' screens. That's it. There's no more anything like the bottom key run. Nothing. I can kick you out if you want me to, Ray. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. Talk I, to you later. I don't even know how to do that. Tell me how to do that, Adam. Um uh just hit uh right click on their screen and then you can hit remove and then it'll ask you if you want to report them to zoom because they were doing something bad just hit no and so oh remove i see it yeah. wow learn something new every day yeah. uh, that's what you need when you get the kids jumping in doing inappropriate stuff on zoom has is that still a thing yes still not as bad but it still is yeah. especially when they have their screens off and they like to make inappropriate noises right well. or their boyfriend and girlfriend are together and they're making inappropriate noises because they forgot their mic was on so that's, oh, that's, okay. <laughs> that's all kinds of fun there no, uh, for the for the professional membership i emailed career essentials usa and then i completed the um order this inquiry uh, form does that sound about right on the career essentials.org um, just... i think i think that's going to start the process at least terry okay remind me again what school you are garrett mary m knight in oh, Mahalo, washington that's right i'm so excited to have them back have you uh -huh. <laughs> where's mary m knight Matlock, Washington. It's uh, by Elma. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, you had an advisor that was gung-ho there for a while. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see. Trying to bring it back. It was a she. Uh, I said, well, oh. we are trying to bring it back. <laughs> oh. Um, I think Miss Dana. Yes. There you go. Okay, so I have your name is in here um, for your as an advisor. Let's mm -hmm. just make sure your emails in there and your email and everything. So that ensures that you are getting the announcements and stuff, but you're not a member yet. So some of the things I don't know, I can't remember when you joined the call, but you wouldn't be able to see some of the things that um, Adam actually referred to yet. Okay, so yeah, it looks like I. I went to the career essentials and for the um, went to purchase information and it, I filled out a form uh, about the order inquiries and then I followed up I followed up with an email to order online order skills USA org. I'm going to email you right now how to join yourself as a member. Oh perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So as you might notice, my uh, videos going in and out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's we're it's dinner time now. It's getting busy. So yeah, so I think I'll probably let you guys go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just at question time anyway. So okay. we're done with Thank the presentation. You. So if you if you guys have have your questions answered, then we can end this. I think I, I'm good. So thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. And then lastly, I just need to, it sounds like there's two or three things that I need to um, register and pay for it. It's state and then, um, and then just this over scope overall uh, skills USA at the national level. 
Yeah, I will, since I'm, um, yeah, I will send you that right now. That'll have, show you how to join as a member. And then when you do that, automatically you create your invoice um, and it will email you a copy of it. And it will also, um, a, a pop-up will come up with the actual invoice that um, after you've joined. So like Adam was saying, I would just go ahead and start with joining yourself first, so you get to see things and then you can decide um, at how many students you actually want to join. We don't actually have a limit to um, how many you have to join for your chapter. So uh, usually OSPI is looking for, you know, at least just a handful um, to make sure that you have, you know, president and secretary and treasurer, that kind of thing. Um, is, is this the registered.skillsusa.org? Correct. Because I've, I've been in there and I've I've paid there before and, and and put kids in and everything. So um, so it's just that one is the only thing that I have to register for. Um yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You you don't have to do anything for state unless one of your kids qualifies for state. So Okay, got it. Yeah, that was mentioned at another meeting that you have to register uh for nationals and then for state, but perhaps they met the competitions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. right now you're just you're just doing your professional membership and then any of your students, which like I won't register my students until November. Um, you know, once I really know which kids are going to be committed to it and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, there's not a not it's not pressing that your kids register tomorrow, um, but okay. you definitely want to so you can get access to all the resources. And so, so, Adam, if you don't mind, I apologize again for coming a little late. Um, the I'm just really looking for like a, a, um, I've kind of gone in and out of Skills USA, but you know, smaller school, uh, rebuilding a lot of things, and so I've kind of been going in and out with it. Um, but I just haven't really been able to see it in action, like uh, you know, modeled. Um, and um, and so, but I'm just trying to. Uh, you know, just for what, I, what I've been reading, it sounds like uh, we we incorporate we teach to the standards of the competitions. Uh, looks like there's some curriculum that that aligns to the standards. Um, so I'm what I'm kind of looking for is like how often do you, do you get together after school and work on this with your kids, or or just in the classroom? So the my philosophy and like kind of the way that i think ospi wants it is every kid in your class should get the the ctso experience at least from the leadership employability like the 21st century skills mm -hmm. so um so like in my class we do resume building we do mock interviews um the kids are given different leadership roles inside a class. Like these guys are supervisors, this and that. So like, I try to set my classroom up like it's a business and then have mm -hmm. kids fill all the different structures of the business. And then we rotate that throughout the year. Um, but like kind of keep that structure so that it's just a framework. So you can just plug any one of your projects that you're doing into that framework. So you're not reinventing the wheel every time. Mm -hmm. Um, the other part of it is like, um, you know, resume building is a huge part of the skills USA curriculum, but I actually think what we do at our school is better. So mm -hmm. I don't force myself to use the skills USA curriculum. I just go, oh, they have a resume building curriculum. I'm going to label my stuff that I do as resume building for skills USA because it covers everything that's in there plus a whole bunch more. So it's not like you have to reinvent your classroom to fit the curriculum that SkillsUSA has. It's mm -hmm. more you seeing what there is available and how can you label what you're already doing as that because it's as good or better, or how can I use it to supplement what I'm already doing? It, it. It's kind of the, the thought process there. And then again, I use the assess or the, the contests as my assessments in class and I announced it I'm like hey we're doing this assessment this is exactly what this would be in skills USA um, here's what your score would be so even the kids who decide not to compete they're still getting the competition component inside of the classroom you know so mm -hmm. then um, my kids who are really in the, like they want to compete and they want to be on the leadership team and all that 
um, they'll run um, like we we're at a skill center, so we don't we can't do it after school. So they kind of we will just break off. Okay, you guys are doing this for this part while the rest of the class is doing this, and um, just kind of do it that way. Um, other schools they'll have that as their club activity after school, where okay, we're going to do all of our voting and and all that type of stuff, and we're going to practice for competitions um, during that time as well. Um, so you can choose how you kind of want to do that. Okay. Um, so whatever works best for you. So again, I, I really like to stress. You shouldn't be adding more stuff onto your plate. It should be how can you utilize the stuff to just make your job easier and just label it correctly, mm-hmm. you know, and use resources that make your life easier. So, like it. That's the goal. <laughs> Making yeah. progress. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm a teacher too, and every time they roll out, hey, we're doing this training. It's like, God, you know, how am I going to integrate this? So, I mean, I know that feeling and. Um, this definitely shouldn't be how you feel. Um, and then again, if you're working throughout the year and you're like, Hey, I really, I see the skills USA piece you know, of curriculum. I don't really understand how I can incorporate it into my class. This is what I do. I can work with you on how to figure that out. Um, okay. I'm pretty, pretty decent at that. Um, and, you know, just kind of give you basically I'll throw ideas at it, out at you and then they'll go, no, that won't work. That won't work. Oh, that does work. And uh, then you can take it and do what you want with it. So awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think I, I can um, get the rest on my own, but I, I appreciate you guys' time. Yep. And then, Terry, you're going to send this link out, right, to, to this video? Um, yeah, I will. Yeah, that'll take me a couple of days, just so you know. Yeah, so um, I get I so get the, I get the notice um, that it's been reported, and then I download it. I gotta put it in the YouTube because the cloud. Um, we don't have that much paid storage. Or I don't have paid storage space. Bye, okay. so, Terry. Bye, Adam. Thank you again. Oh, see you, Jared. Yeah. Amending the recording now.